NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft has been sent back its first message. To pick it up using, um, we've got these antennas in this deep space network. After over four decades of silent persistence, traversing the vast emptiness beyond the planets, Voyager 2 had remained one of humanity's most distant and resilient eyes on the universe. Launched in 1977, its mission evolved from planetary flybys to something far more ambitious, venturing into the uncharted territory of interstellar space. Over time, it became less a spacecraft and more a wandering ghost, carrying the stories of Earth on a golden record and transmitting cryptic signals from the edges of our solar system. But recently, NASA made a chilling and final decision. Following a stunning and disturbing data transmission from the spacecraft, the United States abruptly shut down all communication with Voyager 2. No farewells, no public debrief, just silence. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. This sudden cessation of a mission that had withstood solar flares, deep space radiation, and four decades of system degradation shocked many within the space community. Voyager 2 had long been admired not just as a marvel of engineering, but as a symbol of endurance, operating billions of miles from Earth with technology older than most of its caretakers. For it to be terminated so unceremoniously suggested that something was uncovered, something that warranted a full stop. The transmission that preceded its shutdown wasn't just an error or a mechanical failure, it was something else. Something that prompted immediate classified action. The implications of this discovery might be too great to ignore. What Voyager 2 encountered wasn't within our solar system but far beyond the heliopause, the outermost boundary where the solar wind is repelled by interstellar space. This is a region so vast and unstructured that human understanding of it remains embryonic. The instruments on board Voyager 2 had been transmitting standard readings of particle densities, cosmic rays, and magnetic fields, all expected behaviors for a spacecraft moving through such a sparse frontier. Then came the anomaly. Data streamed back showing a massive fluctuation in the surrounding plasma environment, far beyond what standard astrophysical models could account for. It wasn't turbulence or a rogue shockwave, but a localized and repeating pattern, as though something not natural had manipulated the space around the probe. The fluctuation seemed to follow a structure, as if being orchestrated or transmitted by design. This wasn't just a spike in radiation or a change in density, it mirrored a kind of artificial signal pattern, one that grew more precise with each transmission. Telemetry showed the fluctuations weren't random. They came in intervals with slight modulations that mirrored patterns found in advanced encryption protocols. It was as if Voyager 2 was receiving a message, not broadcasting one. Even more unsettling, those modulations began syncing with the spacecraft's internal systems, influencing its orientation and, for a brief moment, affecting its energy consumption. Engineers initially believed it was a malfunction, Systems that had never displayed autonomous behavior began executing slight course corrections, even though the craft wasn't equipped with self-navigation. Its instruments adjusted their orientations without command. Onboard diagnostics, still functional despite their age, reported no internal errors, as though the changes were being accepted and processed as valid instructions. Then more readings followed. Spikes in temperature where none should exist, particle detections that didn't align with known cosmic particles, and the emergence of a strange electromagnetic signature hovering just outside the range of the spacecraft's direct sensors. A team of analysts and astrophysicists was quickly assembled to interpret the data. The deeper they delved, the more disturbing it became. The electromagnetic frequency Voyager 2 detected bore a pattern, a repeated sequence that defied naturally occurring wavelengths. The signal contained a recursive algorithm, something that repeated itself in a way that suggested intentional encoding. It hinted at a structure, mathematical precision, that didn't belong to space as we knew it. The data stream had the complexity and stability of a computational process. It wasn't noise, it was communication, or worse, it was control. For 72 hours, Voyager 2 continued to transmit the anomaly. Each cycle brought more intense feedback, almost like a dialogue, though its origin could not be pinpointed. The signal seemed to originate from all directions and none, diffused and spatially unpredictable, bypassing conventional physics. 
Deep Space Network engineers began noting odd behaviors in their own Earth-side systems during signal reception windows. Oscillations in frequency counters, memory inconsistencies, and data corruption isolated only to the equipment receiving Voyager 2's transmission. It was as if the signal structure could reach beyond the probe, into our systems on Earth. The implications of this were terrifying. If a signal could propagate from interstellar space and affect terrestrial equipment, what else might it influence? Was this signal just a passive artifact of an unknown region? Or was it active, intentional, and intelligent? The broader concern became clear. Something out there was aware, not just of Voyager 2, but of its origin, purpose, and perhaps even its makers. It had reached out, not in greetings, but in a deeply calculated series of interactions that altered the probe's behavior. This wasn't a passive discovery. This was contact or surveillance. Government agencies became involved swiftly. The anomalous data was reclassified. Access was restricted. The team analyzing the signal was broken up, compartmentalized under multiple departments. Officially, the public heard only of a routine power issue that warranted a graceful shutdown. But internally, the tone shifted. There was no grace in the action taken. Communication with Voyager 2 was not ended because of a technical limit, but out of strategic caution. Whatever had been encountered was deemed too risky to continue interacting with. The safest action was silence. That silence was not just a severing of communication with a distant machine. It was a barrier, hastily constructed between humanity and something unknown. The fear was not rooted in immediate destruction, but in the unknown motivations of the force encountered. Voyager 2 had unknowingly become a beacon, its decades-long journey culminating in a signal that reached farther and perhaps deeper than it ever should have. To allow it to keep transmitting would have been to keep the door open. And so they shut it. But there was one final concern, one that rippled through the inner corridors of space agencies and defense networks. Had it already gone too far? If the signal that reached Voyager 2 was capable of manipulating the spacecraft systems and even bleeding into Earth-based receivers, what guarantee was there that cutting communication would stop it? Could a signal that complex, intelligent, and possibly non-local be so easily dismissed? Or was it merely the beginning of a process we had only barely glimpsed? The probe itself had no shielding against such an encounter. It wasn't designed for first contact. It was built to observe, measure, and report. Yet in its final act, it may have revealed something that no one was prepared to deal with. A presence beyond the stars that not only observed back, but responded. Whether it was a natural intelligence, a construct of some ancient stellar civilization, or a phenomena born from the geometry of space-time itself, the reality remained. Voyager 2 had brushed up against it, and that brush may have been interpreted as an invitation. No one has confirmed whether the signal persists. With the probe silent, there are no more updates. But satellites monitoring the outer heliosphere have reportedly picked up anomalies, unexplained noise, brief pulses that resemble the pattern first detected by Voyager 2. They are faint, infrequent and difficult to distinguish from cosmic background radiation. But they're there, like distant echoes searching for a reply. What makes this all the more haunting is the knowledge that Voyager 2 had no guidance, no defenses, no sentience, only a stubborn will to persist through the vacuum. In its silence, it now rests as an instrument lost to the void, or perhaps absorbed by whatever it encountered. And with its shutdown, humanity has taken a step back, withdrawing into the comfort of known space, reluctant to acknowledge what may have awakened. The decision to terminate contact may have bought time, but it didn't bring answers. The discovery left behind is a reminder of how little we understand of the cosmic ocean we float in. Voyager 2, in its final act, lifted a corner of the veil and glimpsed something that defied understanding, something vast, silent, and aware. And for that, it was silenced. The implications reach far beyond science. This wasn't just about particle measurements or electromagnetic waves. This was a confrontation with the other, whatever form that other takes. Was it alive? A construct? A sentinel left by a long-dead civilization? A mechanism embedded in the fabric of space itself to respond to intrusions? Each possibility raises more questions than answers, and each is more unsettling than the last. The encounter challenged not just our understanding of space, but of ourselves, our assumptions, our readiness, 
our vulnerability. As more data is quietly buried and memories sealed under oath, the story of Voyager 2's final moments may fade from the public eye. But for those who watched the transmission, who saw the raw data as it came through, there is no forgetting. There is no denying the moment when a lonely spacecraft reached across the gulf of the stars and something reached back. The story isn't just about a machine being turned off. It's about the end of innocence in deep space exploration. No longer can we pretend that the cosmos is a blank canvas for our probes and rovers. No longer can we send out signals into the dark without wondering who or what may be listening. Voyager 2 was never supposed to be a key, but it may have unlocked something nonetheless. And now, that something knows we are here. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us, what are your thoughts on Voyager 2's shutdown? What do you think it found? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.